So the multi-state Texas lawsuit that was filed against Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Georgia to overturn the results of their elections is officially dead. Or is it? Thank you, everybody, for joining. I'm Joe Pometto. I'm a local Pittsburgh attorney. This is my show, Joe the Lawyer, where I look at legal news and lawsuits. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Really trying to get more subscribers right now. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification button as well. So if you're a regular watcher of my show, you know that I said that I was going to take a look at the the complaint filed by the Texas Attorney General uh, and backed by multiple states in the union and the Trump administration to overturn the election results of the swing states of Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Georgia, which is now a swing state. Well, maybe I lied to you because due to, um, due to subsequent events, I don't think I'm going to go into the complaint or I may at a later day, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. Well, today, Friday, December 11th, 2020, you can see at the top of this document right here, the Supreme Court of the United States rejected the filing by the state of Texas. So let's read it, let's uh, interpret what it is saying, and then there was a, a dis, uh, an additional opinion here, I'll have to look if it was consenting or concurring, um, written by Justice Samuel Alito and Justice Clarence Thomas, and we'll try to read into the tea leaves of that as well. So you can see here at the top, Friday, December 11th, 2020, order in pending case, um, 155 Texas v. Pennsylvania et al. I just get a kick out of that title. I'm from Texas. It's like, te or I'm from Pennsylvania. And Texas is coming after Pennsylvania. I also, well, the state that I lived in, actually, I'm sorry, I lived in Florida, but I also lived in Texas. Th Texas was the third, um, the state that I've lived in the third longest in my life, though it was less than a year, almost about a year. Um, but uh, Texas, Florida, and Pennsylvania are kind of my states. So let's see here, order and pending case. This is what the Supreme Court wrote. Supreme Court of the United States. The state of Texas's motion for leave to file a bill of complaint is denied for lack of standing under Article 3 of the Constitution. Texas has not demonstrated a judicially cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections. All other pending motions are dismissed as moot. So what is the Supreme Court saying here? Well, they cite Article 3 of the Constitution. Article 3 of the Constitution establishes judicial branch, federal government, and under Article 3, the judicial branch consists of the Supreme Court of the United States, as well as lower courts created by Congress. But what it really covers is the jurisdiction, the original jurisdiction of the United States Supreme Court. So if you watch my prior videos, and I, I, I told you I believed that it was going to be denied on this basis, so um, I'm going to give myself a little pass on the back here okay uh be if you watch my prior videos in order for a state to just take a lawsuit against another state directly to the supreme court under article three all right the, it has to be the type of dispute that can only be resolved by the supreme court can only be resolved by the supreme court because because if that's not the case if that's not the case all right what they sh what a, a state like Texas should do is work its way up through the lower courts bring it in a federal district court first bring it in a state court first work its way up to the Supreme Court the type of disputes that are normally between states are uh, trade disputes border disputes citizenship disputes this is a bit different and essentially what the Supreme Court is saying here is you can see Texas has not demonstrated a cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections so the P Supreme Court is essentially saying look this is not the type of case where there should be original jurisdiction all right therefore the court the Texas does not have standing standing means that Texas doesn't have um 
doesn't have the right to bring this lawsuit in this court. I'll be honest with you, it's probable that Texas doesn't have the right to bring this lawsuit in any court. And that is because the United States Constitution makes it fairly clear that within certain boundaries, the states are allowed to determine their own uh, election process. Now, if you take the Pennsylvania lawsuit that the Trump campaign brought, well, Sean Parnell and Mike, Mike Lee, two congressional candidates brought, they ran it through the state courts and then took it to the Supreme Court. All right. And the state Supreme Court addressed they addressed it in a way. <laughs> if you saw my prior videos, they uh, they they dismissed it on the doctrine of lashes. They didn't address the core constitutional issue. Regardless, they wrote an opinion. They addressed the issue. They dealt with it. All right, and that's because it was a Pennsylvania issue involving the Pennsylvania elections. They ran it through the Pennsylvania courts. Basically, what the Supreme Court is saying is Texas. Just doesn't have any interest here, doesn't have any cognizable uh, judicial interest, and in that there's not any case law that would support them having a position in this circumstance to file the lawsuit. So really, the claims that, that are in that Texas lawsuit, this is my legal opinion, should be brought through the by the individual states through the individual courts, right? So this includes issues about Michigan and about uh, Pennsylvania and Georgia and Wisconsin. Well, those should be litigated individually in the individual courts. That's more or less what the Supreme Court is saying here. So this opinion was entered, th this portion that we're looking at here, there's a little more, was entered by seven of the justices. And we're talking um, the three liberal justices, Sotomayor and Kagan, who were appointed by President Obama, Breyer, who was appointed by President Clinton, and now Justin, Justice Roberts, who seems to be on the liberal part of the court, um, uh, but he was appointed by George Bush, <clears throat> and also, perhaps surprisingly, uh, Justice Gorsuch, Justice Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, all three of them also joined um, the liberal justices and Justice Roberts in issuing this opinion. And so I, I just want to put this out there. When everybody gets their, their you know, everybody get really uh, emotional about uh, Supreme Court justices, whether a liberal president puts a liberal on or a, a, a Republican puts a conservative justice on, um, you got to remember, the first thing the courts are always going to look at, look at is the courts themselves. They're going to look out for the interests of the courts. But I've said this over and over. Courts want stability. They want to preserve democracy, preserve the republic. And, you know, overturning an election like this could cause a lot of chaos in the United States. It, it, it truly could. So, um, that's probably part of their interest plus they're but 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 really at the bottom line at the bottom what they're saying here at least in this issue is that that uh they just didn't have the, the correct legal arguments here to just take this boom right into the Supreme Court. So it, it's interesting. It came down fast, kind of squashed the Texas complaint. So now I'm going to read the next portion. All right. You can see here statement of Justice Alito with whom Justice Thomas joins. In my view, we do not have discretion to deny the filing of a bill of complaint in a case that falls within our original jurisdiction. See Arizona v. California, U.S., Thomas J. Assenting. I would therefore uh, grant the motion to file the bill of complaint, but would not grant other relief, and I express no view on any other issue. So what Justice Alito and Justice Thomas are saying is they're saying, look, they, on its face, they, they, I'm going to interpret this a little bit, on its face, this is a dispute between a couple of states. Now, uh, there was a basket of issues here, and perhaps Alito and, and Thomas think that well, they wanted to pluck uh, one or two of those issues out and and actually look at them, and that maybe one of those two uh, two of those issues uh, shows a dispute between the two state between two states that is of a kind, all right, that was contemplated in Article Three of the United States Constitution. All right. Now, 
The, the other seven justices didn't say that, but Alito and Thomas think that there are. This is very common. Justices can, justices can disagree. Lawyers disagree all the time, right? One lawyer, you go to one lawyer, get an opinion. You go to another lawyer, get an opinion, a different opinion. This is true of professionals in general, right? Um, you may go to one doctor who says one thing, another doctor who says another. They might agree on the diagnosis, but how to treat it, they may defer. So this is an example of what we saw here. Now, I would not read too much into this, okay? And, and what they filed here was a motion to file the bill of complaint. So they were asking, Texas was saying, hey, can we can we bring this to the court, all right, and then brief it at more in length and have you guys listen to it? And those other seven justices just shut the door on that completely. Whereas Alito and Thomas might have said, you know what, we're going to let you file it and, 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 and he says here at the end, I express no view on any other issue. That doesn't mean he would have granted anything. That doesn't mean they would have granted anything. They just think that they had the right to file this and that the court should have heard it for whatever reason. All right. And uh, he did not. And, and they also what the court could have done is they could have granted this the filing of the bill of, of complaint. And then when they got the more detailed briefs, they could have then rejected it for the jurisdictional issue. All right. And, and maybe Alito and Thomas would have done that. Who knows? Maybe they wouldn't. But they would have had more arguments to hear. They would have brought more information in. And then they could have written perhaps a more detailed opinion in uh, rejecting the Texas complaint um, that was filed against Pennsylvania and the other states. So uh, it, it's, you know, we're, we're sort of reading in the tea leaves trying to interpret here. One way I would not would not interpret this is is. Uh, sometimes the courts will reject something and will tell you how to do it the proper way. And I've seen some interpretations of this. I don't think that's what's going on here. Okay. I don't think that Texas needs to go back and refile this in a different manner and it's going to get through. Um, the other seven justices said pretty plainly that the issues more or less um, do not present uh, a case where um, this is a dispute of the kind between two states that the Supreme Court should hear. Now, they certainly have the option to go back, file something else, go back to the lower courts, run it through the lower courts, then bring it back to the, the Supreme Court. But to be honest, they've already done that. Um, lawsuits have been filed, at least the one in Pennsylvania, and I haven't followed the lawsuits in the other states. Uh, the, 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 you know, the Republicans and Trump campaign have already done that to a large degree, and it's been rejected on the state levels. And then a couple of those cases have gone up to SCOTUS, and they got rejected as well. So this was kind of like... Uh, uh, this was almost like a last ditch effort. I, I got to be honest. That's what I'm reading here. All right. Is this was a last ditch effort. Now, remember, if you look when I was talking the Pennsylvania issue, I thought there was an issue there and the court sort of punted on it. And I haven't looked directly at these issues here. All right. I'm not taking a position here. I'm just trying to explain and give you guys my legal opinion um, of and, and read the tea leaves here. So I do think this is the end of this lawsuit. OK, uh, that's because seven of the justices said no jurisdiction. I don't think they can go back and refile and bring it up. Alito and Thomas were ready to hear it here, but nothing's going to change, even if they change their format, etc. Try to bring it back up. So um, I, I think this is the end of this particular challenge. And that's why I'm not going to go into the complaint like I had, to I had told everybody. All right. Um, I don't know if you, I don't think everybody would be interested in it at this point. I didn't think this SCOTUS rejection was going to come down so quick. I was going to go into the complaint over the weekend. Um, so I'm not going to do that detailed analysis of the complaint. We looked here at this uh, rejection of the lawsuit. Now, if it does, does become revived somehow, some way, and I can't see everything that happens, then I will take a look at it, all right? And we'll go over everything and we'll go from there. Um, but I, I hope you enjoy my legal opinion. Uh, I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, like, subscribe, comment, and share. Just dropping a comment really helps me when it comes to the search engine of YouTube. They will advertise my channel and my shows to a wider range of audience if people are um, if people are interacting with me in the comments. So go ahead, leave me a comment. Thank you very much. Free way to support the show. Have a great day.